This is what we're doing. God will judge you. Yo! I'm not what a coward looks like. Why did you die? You better fight for your own freedom. It's just your fight, NYPD. It's just your fight, NYPD. It's just your fight, NYPD. We stand with you. Order, order, order. I want to know their names. Please, please, they're gonna take. You are traumatizing a little child. This is fucking disgusting. Yeah, absolutely insane. That is the brave NYPD that cannot stop robberies and other crimes, arresting mainly people of color, including a child, because they tried to visit the American Museum of Natural History and they didn't get government permission and didn't have their medical records in order to do so. That's the world that we're living in right now. But for how long is the question? Welcome back, beautiful and amazing human beings. This is Luke Radowski here of We Are Change the Work, and we're gonna be trying to answer that question here today, especially with the latest numbers coming from the United Kingdom and the United States, where we have two exact opposite approaches right now, as truly what the United Kingdom just did is absolutely groundbreaking and is creating the dam to break, even though there's some absolute sociopaths that are hell-bent on creating as much chaos as they can from this situation that is diminishing right in front of them. We're going to be talking about that, plus a lot more. Lots of crazy Russian news, but before we do, the clip that we played in the beginning of this video is by at L2FTV. Never heard of these guys, but uh, hey, check them out. They, they, they showed us some, some really important videos that the world needs to see, and uh, I definitely do believe Michael Malice's comment here is the spiciest one. <laughs> with other people commenting that if this was a riot or looting, the NYPD would of course look the other way, just like they have routinely done so. Now, comparatively, the situation in New York City is almost as bad as America's foreign policy, as Joe Biden, the President of the United States, just a few hours ago held a press conference where he virtually invited Russia to invade Ukraine, essentially saying that Russia will be attacking Ukraine, and that if there's a minor incursion, there will be discussion about consequences, propping many people to believe that the United States wants this invasion to happen in order to deflect against the many clear failures of this administration, which Joe Biden has been calling, quote, progress. To the point where even the corporate media, his allies that put him in power, are criticizing him for his clear failures in policy, especially when it comes to the global sickness, which we're going to be talking about in just a little bit. But as some people are calling them mistakes, I think they're deliberate actions that, of course, benefit the special interests that really do call the shots behind the scenes, the suits that are truly in power. That, are, of course, are using Joe Biden essentially as a puppet to push through some of the most unpopular policies that we have ever seen in our current American political system as the ruling establishment is literally going for broke with some of the biggest, most aggressive moves we have seen all done under the disguise of an aging old man who is not there. Now, the Ukrainian situation is an utter disaster, especially for the people of Ukraine, especially with a lot of the people in the international community seeing Afghanistan as a perfect example of American foreign policy. The Biden administration has had to issue another statement after Biden's first statement saying that, of course, they will protect Ukraine at all costs, that there allegedly would be a swift response Ukrainian politicians are, of course, very pissed off on his statements about a minor incursion, which would mean the invasion of their country. And all of this is happening as, of course, many CIA agents are going into Ukraine along with U.S. Special Operation Forces and a lot of military hardware, as reported by CBS News, that, quote, the United States is rushing weapons into Ukraine right now. This whole situation will most likely unfold in a limited conflict, a doctrine, of course, proposed originally by individuals like Henry Kissinger that has already seen similar situations currently unfold in Syria, in Yemen, and in other places around the world, where, of course, global powers fight each other through proxies, protecting, of course, against mutual assured destruction, but still feeding the beast of the military-industrial complex as much as they can, as, of course, everyone still pays the price for this conflict, which is absolutely unnecessary, in my opinion. And geopolitically, strategically, I believe the United States is making a grave mistake, especially since a conflict in Ukraine would trigger another one that would most likely happen in, of course, Taiwan, with the Chinese and Russians being brought closer together under the current scope 
of the foreign policy and geopolitical system that has been deployed on the world stage. I would even go further and to speculate that this deliberate blunder or mismanagement of this entire geopolitical situation might be done deliberately in order to destroy the global influence of the United States, which some would argue already received irreversible damage with the atrocities committed in Afghanistan, where the policy literally built up that country to specifically mine materials for batteries, which China is now coming in, harvesting, and using for their, of course, electric car production, which the United States is mandating that they will be a customer of. And the more you start paying attention to American foreign policy, the more you just start shaking your head in absolute ab absurdity of belief with how incredulous it is. I still have a lot more to say about this topic. I'm going to save it for later because we still got a lot of very important information to get into. And of course, I'm going to be doing another video later on today on the bigger topic of how our our young people are absolutely robbed and corrupted in many surprising ways. We're doing a deep dive into the larger social issues that affect us the most later on today on LukeUncensored.com, our very own platform. I hope to see you there. The videos are, of course, released every day through our email list. Make sure to sign up. It's free right here. And you get a notification whenever we have our main YouTube video and Luke Uncensored video come out. Click the link down in the description below to find out more. And uh, truly, if you haven't signed up yet, what are you waiting for? As of course, I've been focusing a lot of my efforts, even more than I do on my YouTube channel, specifically on our own platform. This is the way of the future. This is how we beat all the nonsense coming our way. Not just survive it, but thrive under it with building our own infrastructure. See you there later on today. Now, also on the world stage, there have been two totally different approaches towards this global sickness. And just to quickly use a corporate example of this, you have the Carhartt approach. And then, of course, you have the Starbucks approach that are currently being exemplified and deployed in different countries, depending on which policy they favor. Carhartt, for example, is facing massive blowback and a lot of people in organizations calling for their boycott as the urban hipster and rural workers clothing brand just issued a statement to all of its Michigan based company employees, 5,500 of them total to be compliant with Biden's mandates that that were recently overthrown by the Supreme Court mandating them to take a procedure that there's no going back from, that some people don't need, and that clearly don't really have an effect on the global number of cases <laughs> around the world. So after the Supreme Court just, just threw this mandate down, why would you implement your workers to do this or threaten to fire them if they don't? That's a ridiculous policy that absolutely makes no sense at all, and that of course is the Carhartt policy compared to of course Starbucks policy which just announced that they're ending any kind of mandate within their business structure and they're going to be following the Supreme Court's ruling in the United States and of course not disrupting or trying to fire their workers for a personal medical decision. And now 9,000 U.S. coffee shops and close to 200,000 workers won't be extorted or manipulated or discriminated against for their own personal decisions of what they want to do with their bodies. Now, these are two different corporations, two different approaches, which is perfectly represented, in my opinion, with the exact approaches of what the United States is doing compared to, of course, the United Kingdom. In the United States, the Biden administration is still hell-bent on trying to stop this sickness, which, of course, they have done an atrocious job at and have completely failed at doing so to the point where the Biden administration is taking people's tax dollars and buying 400 million plus tests along with 400 million plus masks. And of course, the corporate media is saying that these are going to be free tests and masks. They're not. We're paying for it in one way or another since, of course, the U.S. government is buying it and, of course, will probably do an awfully horrible job in distributing it to the general public, just like they did with the stimulus checks. They couldn't even get that right. But having a mask for one day, getting a test for one day, what is that going to help with our current situation with this variant? That's a question that a lot of people are asking as, of course, 
England has just announced that they're dropping virtually all of their lockdowns, restrictions, and mandates, specifically when it comes to this sickness. A major move, an extremely significant domino that has fallen, that of course will be impacting other places like the Czech Republic, that also just announced that a domestic passport system is absolute nonsense, as declared by their political leadership that just ended it, even though this policy is being continued in New York City. Also very interestingly, in the United United Kingdom, there's a major medical journal demanding that all the data surrounding this procedure that governments have been mandating be made public and released immediately. As of course, a lot of people have some very serious questions to what is actually going on here, since of course, a lot of the data surrounding this procedure, surrounding the effects of this procedure, surrounding the data of how it was implemented, the studies beforehand, by and large have been hidden from the general public now we have a major medical institution calling for all the raw data to be released. What are we going to find out from that raw data? I don't know, but I bet it's probably going to be surprising. And we're even reaching a point where the World Health Organization is calling for international travel restrictions to be lifted. As of course, many places around the world like South Africa that have dealt with this new variant are what many people say are in the clear and are finished with this nonsense. Also, comparatively, if you look at the numbers in the United Kingdom, they are following the numbers in the United United States just one week behind with the numbers dramatically declining in the United Kingdom and expected to rapidly decline from here. According to a lot of analysts, the, the numbers will continue to drastically go down in the United States, in the United Kingdom, signaling, of course, the end of this nonsense. Are we done? Are we in the clear? Well, no. There's still some bureaucrats that are just hell-bent on fear, destruction, and chaos as Dr. Fauci is warning that this is not going to be over anytime soon. The Biden administration is implementing possibly more border restrictions as, of course, Canada is dramatically impacting the global supply chain with, of course, mandates on truckers, which have started a lot of major protests, which you haven't really heard about. And in the United States, just so people don't see how absolutely horrible the situation is now, now, container ships are told to wait 150 miles offshore in order to, quote, ease air quality issues. Yeah, financially, the situation is grim. It's not looking good. Even though we might be over with this global sickness, the financial problems are just starting, in my opinion, and only being exacerbated and made worse by failed policies by the Canadian government, the U.S. government, that are looking to extend them, which, of course, will only extend the economic suffering of everyone else. 400 million tests and masks. What are you doing? The numbers are going down. This makes no sense at all, especially with all the information that we're getting surrounding this new variant. And again, don't chalk this up to mistakes. A lot of this is deliberate. A lot of this is meant to sow chaos. They want order out of chaos, and they're going to get it if enough people blindly follow them and allow them to do so. That's my perspective. If you think I'm wrong, let me know why in the comment section below. I got another video coming your way specifically on LukeUncensored.com. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you guys watching and sharing these videos, and this is why I love you guys. Stay tuned for more here on WeAreChange.org.